And so I just think we should do it today. Let's just call for it. I'll, I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. I want to help you out. You can second it, right? Like, make the motion to impeach President Biden. Go ahead. It's your turn. Sec you second it. No, nothing. Okay, we got nothing. So I want to, with my last couple of minutes, show the American people that they're never going to impeach Joe Biden. It's never going to happen because they don't have the evidence. Okay, this is a show. It's all fake. They just want to do these hearings. It's not leading to impeachment. They're lying to their base on Newsmax and Fox, leading these people to believe that they're going to eventually impeach the president. It's not going to happen at all, ever, period. They don't even have the votes, even if they had it in committee. They don't have the votes on the floor. They know that. They got members resigning rather than taking a vote on the fake faux impeachment. Just ask Ken Buck, who said the speaker ain't going to get me to take an unconstitutional impeachment vote. Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz challenging House Republicans to hold a vote on President Biden's mm. impeachment during their latest hearing yesterday. He's like, come on, guys. We got it. Let's I do mean, it. Let's, he, you he's, ready? He, he's good. He's good. <laughs> As Eddie Murphy would say in Coming to America, that boy's good. I mean, he is, he is good. And he's got a lot of material to work with, Rev. A lot of material. I mean, at this point, Fox, Newsmax, they're all going, come on. Uh. You're making fools of yourself. Obviously, they've been watching Morning Joe for like a, a year because that's what we've been saying. <laughs> I don't think so. Stop. No, serious. When no, you yeah. start when you start putting Arnold the pig yeah. as your chief legal counsel, like that's a hint. They ha they <sighs> they have been making idiots of themselves for a year now. And when Arnold starts oinking, it really becomes here, here, obvious. Oh, oh, well, here's actual footage in the Republican <laughs> caucus room arguing about. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's getting ready. Yeah, he's getting ready for the next hearing. He, Look at I, I got. I got this. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Red. No, I said we didn't mean to when Arnold starts makers. oinking while he's getting yeah. the cookies or yeah. something, yeah, then yeah. everybody knows who your counsel is. Yeah. And I think, you know, you have to give it to Moskowitz. He really drove it home. I mean, it's. As a preacher, when you go to the climax of the sermon, he yeah. went there yeah. to where almost the Republicans had to say amen to that. Well, and he even had an invitation. Yeah. He said, <laughs> start playing just as I am and come on up if you want to impeach. No takers. Nobody came down front more because they've got nothing on Biden. I will tell you what irks me is it's not that these House Republicans... Are, are well, just stupid. They, they've just acted in such a stupid way, and I wish there were a better word to use than that. There's not a more eloquent word. There's not. But what really irritates me is I've had people in the mainstream media, as Trump would say, telling me constantly, like, what, what, why, why is the media avoiding this Hunter Biden scandal? Why is the media? I know we've all heard it. Oh, you know, we need to do a better job. We need to be more down the middle. And I've been going through this with a couple of well-known journalists. I go, what do you got? Give me what you Oh, Tony Bobolinsky. And give me more. What do you got? What? They have nothing. No. And they have been pushing this. And I think a lot of media outlets have gone, well, we have to be fair on both sides. Well, you have to be on fair, fair on both sides if there are facts on both sides. There have never been any facts here. No, I mean, you know, one of the tenets of journalism is you go where the facts lead you. And not all facts are, are equal. Not all sources are reliable. And the fact of the matter is there's no there there. And so continuing to treat this as though there is, is really doing a disservice, not only to the president, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but really just to, to Americans, to the uh, electoral system. And it confuses people because you start to think, oh, well, they're all crooks. There's no difference. And that really is, is the point, is to distract from Donald Trump's actual prosecution over, you know, very right. real, very real issues and, and threats to democracy. And, of course, you know, what we're seeing here is all of this impeachment talk was fine when people were focused, when the Republicans were focused just on the primary. But now you're going to see the moonwalk right. a little bit here back mm -hmm. because they're thinking about November. And actually, I don't think that a circus trying to impeach uh, the president is going to actually be very good for Donald Trump. 
So the whole thing is trying to save Donald Trump from himself, trying to save themselves from Donald Trump. I mean, they're twisted in so many knots, they right. don't know what's up and what's down. And, and Jonathan, as long as they weren't pursuing this as actively as they, 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 they have been, and making fools of themselves, it was actually sad to say working. You talk about disinformation, you could look at the polls and all of the lies about Hunter Biden, all of the lies about Joe Biden getting rich off of Hunter Biden, all of the BS, all of the BS that the right wing Trumpers have been spewing, um, whether it's on podcasts or whether it's uh, in newspapers, whether it's on cable news, it's worked. And so the White House was really frustrated about, you know, who, who's bigger concern, you know, uh, you know, Trump and all of his his scandals or, you know, the Biden crime family. They didn't put it quite that way, but it actually cut into Joe Biden's polling. So Arnold the pig and his cohorts have actually done the White House a favor because they've exposed this slide. Right. This was dis disinformation that they made the mistake of putting out in the light of day, and light really is the best disinfectant. And it's wiped this clean off, uh, off, off the slate for, I think, for most voters now. Yeah, in terms of a political play, they should have left it on Fox News, leave it on the podcast, leave it in their fundraising emails. But now that it's gone uh, into the halls of Congress and it's been exposed as as a sham, they have repeatedly been unable to provide any sort of evidence. Their best witnesses are incarcerated or on the run, and they haven't provided any sort of real evidence that 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 President Biden or his family have engaged in any sort of behavior that would be criminal or impeachable. And they're not giving up, at least not yet, because. Uh, Comer, Chairman Comer yesterday said that he's inviting President Biden to come testify. That he wants and, the and, president and at this to point, come. That's why Newsmax, that's why Fox, everybody's going, hey, hey, mm. just leave it to the pig. Right. Like, don't, just stop this. Is Arnold the pig, by the way, one of yeah. the Republicans who actually went to one of those elite schools? Did he also have the degrees like Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley? Well, no, which is why he's only smart when there. Yeah. He, he, he went to Arkansas. He did. Okay. University of Arkansas. Uh, the, uh, we should just note that the post grad. Post grad at Alabama, where yeah, I roll, went. Roll uh, we had a picture of him up. I walked past Bear <laughs> Bryant <laughs> and yeah, him and, and Arnold right there. Yeah, he's got a prominent alum. Yeah, uh, the damn straight he is. Uh, the White House did not respond, but just to close the loop here uh, on the invitation of the president to respond. But Ian Sams did put out this statement saying that hearing was embarrassing for House Republicans, a total waste of time. It's time to move on from this sad charade. There are real issues the American people want us to address. That's White House spokesman. Uh, little known fact. Ian Sams, University of Alabama grad. I did know that, actually. And it's egregious and hypocritical attempts to influence Israeli domestic politics aren't some simple or narrow critique of a particular prime minister. They're an affront to the very independence of the state of Israel, a sovereign nation, a robust democracy, and one of America's closest allies and friends. Let me say this. I care deeply about Israel and its long-term future. When you make the issue partisan, you hurt the cause of helping Israel. There's a specific accusation that you are interfering in a foreign election. You should not show any distance between the United States and a close ally at a time of war. That's what the uh, Republicans are saying. Well, let me say this. I gave this speech out of a real love for Israel. And if you read the speech, we called only to, for there to be an election after the hostilities had declined, after Hamas was defeated. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held talks with Senate Republicans and House Speaker Mike Johnson yesterday via video conference. And Majority Leader Chuck Schumer denied Netanyahu's request to address the Senate Democratic Caucus. A spokesperson for the senator said he made it clear he, quote, does not think these discussions should happen in a partisan manner. And again, once again, you see the Republicans, <laughs> you know, at a time of immense, immense pain for both the people in Gaza and for Israelis who went right. through October 7th and some who are feeling 
a sense, a lack of validation from their own government. You've got the Republicans accusing the Democrats for getting involved, but they're the ones actually interfering uh, with foreign policy, with our foreign policy, by not passing legislation that would support the Israelis and the Ukrainians. Right. The Israelis, the Ukrainians, Taiwan. I mean, it's, it's, real, it's astounding uh, how exposed House Republicans are leaving uh, our close allies ac across the globe. I'm going to say a couple things, first of all. The fact that anybody would question Chuck Schumer's support for Israel shows you just how desperate Republicans are, uh, what political hacks they are, how they think you are too stupid to actually see Chuck Schumer's, what, 30-year career in Congress. He has been this, uh, the most steadfast ally of Israel. Um, that's number one. Number two, Richard, the crocodile tears from Benjamin Netanyahu. Again, the question, I, my question is, who is so stupid? Who does he think is so stupid to forget when he's talking about, oh, we should not interfere in fellow, you know, democracies, our, 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 our uh, uh, democratic allies? That's all he does. <laughs> he basically got involved in, in the Romney Obama campaign. He was carrying Donald Trump's water repeatedly. We talked about going back to 2019. He would retweet attacks of Donald Trump, not just of political leaders, of morning cable shows. That's how in the weeds Benjamin Netanyahu got in supporting Donald Trump, in supporting other Republican candidates and going against Democrats. He's been doing this for years to now say, oh, Chuck Schumer shouldn't. It's, it's preposterous. I just got to say one other thing. Again, as somebody who's been one of the fiercest supporters of Israel across my adult life, it is deeply offensive that people tell me that I have no right to speak out when I think, just like when I think my re former Republican Party is hurting itself, or my fellow countrymen and women are hurting this country, that I can't speak out when a friend has a leader who, who made one tragic miscalculation after another and put Israel in the weakest position it's been in since 1948. I'm not allowed as a friend to talk about that. That's such garbage. That's Benjamin Netanyahu just saying, let's just keep pushing this off as long. And the Republicans want him to just push it off as long because mm -hmm. he doesn't want any accountability in the end. First of all, Joe, mm -hmm. you not only have the right, you have the obligation to speak out. If you think Israel, if you care about the U.S.-Israeli relationship, if you care about the future of Israel and you think what they're doing is misguided, you have the obligation to speak out the same way you do if the United States does something that's against our own self-interest. That said, I think you know, I would just question two tactical things that Chuck Schumer did. I think it's, it's right to criticize all sorts of aspects of Israeli policy. I would not have gone the extra thing about calling for elections or making it so ad hominem. The Israelis have made mistakes, including right now. They still have no political answer to what comes next in Gaza or the West Bank. You can't pursue this policy with military means only. I would keep the focus on that. And I would have called Netanyahu's bluff. I don't like the idea that Bibi is talking to uh, House Republicans. Why not then have the Democrats say, OK, let's have a conversation and let's challenge Bibi on everything that he is doing. Let's challenge him on the lack of aid going into Gaza. Let's challenge him on the use of large munitions in crowded civilian areas. Let's challenge him that there's no plan for meeting and even legitimate Palestinian political aspirations. Hey, how about asking a couple of basic questions? Why did it take you so long to save your own people? Hey, why is it that you found mm -hmm. out in 2018 where Hamas's illicit funding what? came from and you and Donald Trump did absolutely nothing about it? Why did you send your guy to Doha three weeks before the attacks and you had the Qataris saying, hey, should we keep sending hundreds of millions of dollars to prop up Hamas? And you said, yes, yes. Also, That'd who, be a good question to ask, question. wouldn't it? Because Netanyahu won't answer any of these questions. So I don't like the idea that you know, the Republicans are playing this cynical game after not approving the legislation. They're the ones who are, quote, unquote, pro-Israel now. Right. But 
If they're going to play it again, the Democrats should use this as an opportunity to challenge Netanyahu across the board. Because, again, what he is doing is against the law. We've talked about this here. It's, it's not only bad for Israel. It is going to be ruinous, I fear, for the U.S.-Israeli relationship. And that is a neither country. Well, and, and again, what, what, what people don't realize, and I guess these Republicans don't realize it. Maybe they don't talk to anybody. The clock is ticking. We have Sunni Arab nations leaders that are ready to go in with the United States, help rebuild Gaza, help bring about a peaceful solution, sp spend billions and billions of dollars there and start working towards a two-state solution. That clock's ticking. The Biden White House knows it. Democrats know it. I, I guess Republicans don't know it. But, Mara, this is, you know, campaigns are about contrasts. You have Joe Biden, like, for instance... Talking about saving Social Security for senior citizens. You have Republicans talking about cutting Social Security. Donald Trump saying, well, that's one thing we could do. We could slash Social Security. Um, but on Israel, you know, on colleges, kids have been calling Biden genocide Joe in Michigan. He's been attacked. Look at the contrast here. You have Joe Biden, who spent the past month desperately trying to work this out, trying to help Gazan citizens, knowing that if he just cuts off Israel, things get worse very quickly. So he's balancing all these things. Then you have Donald Trump on the other side and these Republicans saying, let BB go end off. Let him do whatever he wants to do. Trump says, I'll let him do whatever he wants to do. I'll give him whatever he wants to do. He needs to just finish it now. That's a choice. I wonder if voters are going to recognize that choice. Well, <clears throat> tactically, from a diplomatic standpoint, I can't speak to uh, Chuck Schumer's decision to go as far as he did. But what I can say is that it's clear from an American political perspective that holding, and just a moral perspective, holding Bibi Netanyahu to account, asking the tough questions, is important as an ally of Israel. It's important for the United States to do. And it's also important to show Americans that we do actually care about being an honest and fair broker in the Middle East, that we uh, can call a spade a spade when we see it, and that we care about human rights for all people, including Israelis and Palestinians. And I think that it's important, too, to say to American voters, we hear you. You know, a lot of younger voters are very upset, uh, understandably, seeing the deaths of Palestinian children. And they, they want to know that Bibi Netanyahu, that those Israeli policies are being held to account. They're not necessarily anti-Israel. So, you know, I actually think that uh, it, it wasn't a crazy move. Um, and I think what Bibi is doing is extremely cynical. But that's what we should expect. That's what he does. I don't know how many of you know this, but a few weeks ago, I learned that against all odds, I am pregnant. Many of you know that I've had kind of a rough journey with fertility. I had my first miscarriage more than 13 years ago, and I have been pregnant many times since then. Twice I was lucky enough to successfully carry to term, and I have two beautiful, healthy little boys. Now, I wish I could tell you otherwise. Um, but after numerous ultrasounds and blood draws, we have determined that my pregnancy is once again not progressing and is not viable. I don't know how many of you have been unfortunate enough to experience a miscarriage before, but I am not interested in going through it unnecessarily. And right now, the safest and most appropriate treatment for me and the treatment that I choose is abortion. But the laws that this legislature has passed has interfered with my ability to do that, along with countless others. Arizonans deserve the freedom and the liberty to make those decisions for themselves. The mother of two said she decided to reveal her personal story as a wake-up call for state legislatures, giving them a real look at how their policies affect the residents of their state. And the Democratic state senator joins us now. And I really appreciate your coming on. I. I was so moved by your words and so grateful for them because you vividly and deeply personally showed that abortion is health care, 
that abortion isn't the harsh, narrow-minded religious lie put out by the right, but that it's actual health care, like prostate health care, like chemotherapy health care, like mental health care, that abortion, especially in your case, is, is making your life healthier. And it is not something you want, but it is something that you need and choose to have as part of your health care. Um, so I first just want to know, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on today. I'm doing really well. I actually had my abortion yesterday, less than 24 hours ago. I had my procedure. Uh, I was treated so well. I'm doing very well now. I recovered very quickly and I'm, I'm back at work today. So I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm so interested to hear more about that, given um, how public you went about your plans and also the points that you were making about the reasons why you need this type of health care. How has the reaction been and also the procedure itself and, and what kind of discussions did you have about the politics behind all of this, which has really made all of this so much harder for women across America, depending on where they live? Well, as far as the reaction is concerned, it's been overwhelmingly positive. I've had so much support, so many people reaching out to me with their own stories. There have been some negative reactions, of course. What's really been interesting to me is that when I'm online and I'm looking at all of these different reactions to this story, I see so many people who try to argue that what I'm doing isn't abortion or that what happened to me doesn't qualify as abortion somehow. And I think that there's a real misunderstanding that we have to talk about this, that it doesn't matter what the circumstances are for the individual. Everybody has to fall in line under the same laws. I have to follow the same guidelines and procedures as anyone else, no matter how they impact me. And when we look at healthcare, healthcare isn't either an emergency where you're going to die or you're fine. There is a whole spectrum in between. And a lot of things count as, as healthcare, how your family is going to um, be impacted by a pregnancy, how your finances and your socioeconomic status, that impacts your health, um, how the, the relationship that you have with your partner and whether that's healthy or whether it's dangerous and coercive, all of these things count as a part of someone's comprehensive picture of how their health is going to be impacted by a pregnancy. And just because mine might be easier for some people to understand doesn't, doesn't mean that it's any different in the spectrum of how it relates to my health care outcomes the same way that it does as everyone else. I mean, in some cases, if a woman does not have the termination, the abortion that she needs for her health care, she's left sterilized or she's left in a position where she has to bring a baby to term that will die. These are the realities that women who have fetal abnormalities have to deal with now because of the overturning of Roe. I'm curious, had you not had the abortion, what was the fate you were facing? I was inevitably going to have a miscarriage. Um, I, there's no question about whether or not I was going to be able to carry to term. I was not. I've had miscarriages before, and that was not something that I was interested in putting myself through again. It was an extremely traumatic experience for me. It's, it's painful. It's frightening. I've been to the emergency department. I've had just very negative experiences having to go through miscarriages in the past, and having an abortion was a, a much better option for me, something that I felt comfortable with, something that was the right choice, the right decision for me in my circumstance. There was not going to be any scenario under which I was going to be able to carry a baby to term. So abortion was the choice that made the most sense to me. OK, so I just want to put I want to frame that a little bit, if I could, because you have been so generous with your personal information and sharing this on on this show, uh, as well as in your state on the floor. Um, you would have miscarried. Uh, you were sure to miscarry had you not had what yesterday was an outpatient procedure that went well for you so well that you're on national television right now. Instead, you would have been waiting for an experience that would have been shocking, may I add, if I am right, traumatic, and also unexpected. You don't know when it's going to happen. And possibly would it, in, I just, I want those on the far right who somehow have dreamed up that this is part of their religion, which it's not, 
okay? Um, we can just put that to the side and have that debate another day if you think it's your religion, all right? And now look at this woman here who is healthy, who is speaking about her experience of going and getting a healthy abortion, abortion health care, so she's not in the position of bleeding out in some way or having a miscarriage at the drop of a hat. Eva, I don't understand why this is hard, and I'm sorry to take your graphic story, perhaps make it even more graphic, but I think the vividness of what you're talking about is what we all need to talk about. And I'll say it again and again, it's healthcare, it's abortion healthcare. To never say that word without attaching healthcare to it, to remind those that they have someone in their life who might need an abortion that it doesn't only apply to people on the left who are bad and sacrilegious in some way. It's not your religion, by the way. But people on the right who are somehow, somehow still holding on to this abortion as evil concept are going to have someone close to them or even themselves who are going to need one in order to be able to have more children in the future or to not die or bleed out. Am I making myself clear, Eva? And also, I just want to thank you for helping explain this. No, of course, I, of course, I agree with you. And uh, I don't mind sharing the details of my story. I knew when I stood up, even though it was a vulnerable moment, everybody can hear my voice shaking. Everybody can hear me kind of hyperventilating through it. It's, it, you know, it is a vulnerable moment for me. But I knew when I decided to stand up and share that story that I was sharing my journey, my experience. I was still pregnant at the time of that speech. Uh, I'm, I'm here with you today, having had the procedure yesterday. I want people to have a more accurate picture of what the abortion patient looks like, because I do think that there is this narrative that people who are against abortion want to push about who the abortion patient is and what that looks like. And we have to combat that because it's inaccurate and it's unfair. I, and abortion uh, bans are incredibly unpopular. Totally agree. Not only I would love to have you back, up, especially but, on the issue of explaining the procedure and what it because again there's so much misinformation uh, arizona state senator eva birch thank you for everything thank you so much for sharing your story and would love to see you again soon on this show thank you for having me anytime it's such a, an important conversation it's a larger conversation about how we take control of this situation how we translate it into action how we get people to come to the ballot and to make sure that their voices are being heard in a meaningful way in the way that they're not being heard in the arizona legislature right now and in legislatures across the country absolutely thank you so much thank you